Intel's journey into discrete graphics has certainly been rather challenging for the company, with Alchemist of course being the first discrete graphics cards that the company has launched, I'm sure we can all agree that Larrabee just doesn't count, it was a monumental effort in terms of engineering both on hardware and software side to really make things just work for gamers. Now, of course, the company have had a history of iGPUs, thanks to numerous generations of CPUs, but there's a lot of difference and expectations being set when you're talking about discrete GPUs and competing with the likes of AMD and Nvidia. And to Intel's credit, things have gotten much better since Arc first launched, particularly when we're dealing with DirectX 9 and 10 and slash just legacy titles in general. But as always with AMD and Nvidia in particular right now, the focus is on the next generation of products. And of course with Intel, that would be Battlemage. Now the good news is Battlemage has a lot of positives, but there's also some negative stuff that I wanna to talk to you guys as well about. And we're gonna get into all of that plus more after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So as a quick reminder, Intel themselves have gone on record and stated that Battlemage is coming on pretty well. In terms of the hardware, the actual GPUs are basically done right now with all of the efforts essentially being on the software side of things. After all, they need to make sure that things are as good as possible for when they launch. Well, we've seen how things went with the first generation of discrete cards. And I think that there's a much better chance that Intel will be in a pretty good position when Battlemage does launch. After all, at this point, they've got a lot of expertise that they can really leverage and just things have just worked out better in terms of the timelines. With that said, that means the hardware engineers are focused, of course, on Celestial. And as you probably know, that is the next generation of products after Battlemage. Now, I want you guys to cast your minds back to some of the specifications and performance targets that I have leaked previously for Battlemage. If you missed them, well, they're on screen right now. So the highest end Battlemage part was allegedly sporting 56 execution units. Now, of course, Intel themselves haven't officially stated the specs here, but, well, basically, this was the SKU that was going to be trading blows between an RTX 4070 Ti-ish and an RTX 4080. Now, of course, it is important to realize that we are talking about non-final software, so performance targets are going to differ based on whether it's a game, whether it's based on compute, etc., etc., etc. And there's also a leaked roadmap that I put out as well. That particular roadmap, you can see G10, which is basically the higher end SKU that we're talking about here. As you can see, the targeted power uh, limit of this card was 225 watts. And this was the specification, again, you can see it on screen, 56 execution units, 3 gigahertz-ish clock frequency target, 256-bit GDDR6 memory, running at between 18 to 20 Gbps, and of course, again, 16 gigs of it, and 112 to 116 uh, megabytes of L2 cache. Now, I want you now to focus on this slide. Now, this is another slide which I'd leaked, and there are a couple of very intriguing elements to the slide. There are some which are kind of just, well, no duh, because it's a subsequent architecture, for example, ray tracing improvements. There's also, of course, confirmation that they're targeting performance and enthusiast gaming, along with the other usual statements, such as architectural improvements. This is very kind of generic, but it's what it is. However, the one I want you to focus in on here is the next generation memory subsystem and compression. Now, honestly, this slide had always bugged me as a bullet point based upon the specifications that I'd leaked because it just didn't really seem to match one-to-one. -one. Now, of course, marketing slides, well, they're marketing slides, even internal, they tend to be, let's just say they tend to oversell things sometimes. But 
I'm sure most of us can agree that next generation memory subsystem just increasing the L2 cache I guess technically it is next generation, but it always seemed like Intel were implying more here. And perhaps they were, as a new source has actually spoken to me about the leaked specifications and basically said that some of the stuff that I had was correct, but some of it simply wasn't. And, well, you can see the slide on the screen. I'm being told that the G10 specifications were actually 56 execution units, so that's correct, that's good. Faster clock frequency, although I didn't get the specific speed, 192-bit GDDR6, 20 GBPS memory, 8 megabytes of L2 cache. But wait a minute, that's crap. I hear you say, well, this is backed up with 512 megabytes of adamantine cache. Now, this, of course, is the cache system that Intel have been employing in various products, and they've talked about quite a little bit as well. And... It seems a very interesting thing because it does seem a much better fit. Now, I will say, of course, that at the end of the day, these specifications could be wrong, but this source, particularly when we're talking about Intel stuff, has been pretty accurate in the past. That's all I'll say. I don't want to obviously attribute specific stories to specific individuals, but again, they have been pretty accurate in the past. 56 execution units also seems to be 100% correct at this point because there have been a lot of leaks on that. The main difference in specifications here, as you can plainly see, is the memory subsystem. Now, I also want to give you guys um, another SKU. This is a lower end part, which is 40 execution units, 192 bit bus, 18 megabytes of L2. There's no ADA cache here. The memory speed is 20 GBPS. The die size is roughly 250, and apparently it's only um, eight um, times PCIe Gen 5. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit negative. I was basically told there's a very good chance, although it hasn't been determined yet, put that as a little asterisk we'll get into in just a second, that the 56 execution variant of this uh, product lineup is actually not going to be released. Now, I want to be abundantly clear, this is not because of technical bring-up issues. This is not because they're putting you know, the card in a PCIe slot and it's causing it to explode. It's not because of some unforeseen consequence or bug or driver issue or anything like that. It's actually, from what I can understand anyway, due to profit and margins. Basically speaking, although Intel wouldn't exactly be losing a ton of cash per GPU sold, they think it's just not going to be profitable enough for them to do it. Now, it is very possible that this could still happen. It seems that it's not been 100% determined within the company. Now, again, this was the part, I just want to be abundantly clear here, the 56 execution unit part was the was the one that's going to be roughly on par between a 4070 Ti-ish and a 4080. I'm going to say for the sake of this video, 4070 Ti. So that part just may not launch. Again, it is possible they may launch it in some type of low volume. It's possible that Intel will have a change of heart because, well, again, they can do that any time. Maybe they'll release a lower end variant first and then later on they will release this halo skew, quote unquote. But as of the time I'm recording this, it seems that the sentiment within the company is just that they're not so certain how much cash it would make and whether it's worth that amount of effort. So, what about the products which will launch? Well, obviously, I don't need to tell you guys this because this is already official. We've seen Battle Mage already in... Um... Come on, brain, do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say Arrow Lake, but that, that's based on the previous generation architecture, uh, Lunar Lake. So basically, Lunar Lake has already been showing off uh, Battle Mage, and the results are pretty interesting. So, of course, that is a very good thing in terms of iGPUs, like laptops, that type of thing. Obviously, that is always a good thing, and the architecture itself does seem pretty interesting from what I can gather. It seems relatively power efficient, although, of course, at the end of the day, we're still talking about leaks, so... Mm. So the 40 execution unit variant is probably going to launch, um, but I was also told of a higher end um, product. Now, this I was told about by one source in particular. However, one other source did tell me that there was an 80XE variant. However, quite frankly, I didn't actually believe that information at the time, but now there's other sources come out and told me that yes, Intel at one point were considering releasing an 80XC variant. However, that is not going to launch. I'm telling you about this just for interest's sake. 
I mean, I would love for them to launch it. However, I think there's literally less chance if I look out the window right now. No, I don't see a T-Rex sumo wrestling. No, I don't, I don't see that. So there was actually less chance of that happening than this particular event, which, as I said, just didn't happen. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see a T-Rex sumo wrestling. But yeah, being, being you know, serious for a second, the ATX um, variant had been considered for a moment, but it just never, ever saw the light of day. I don't actually know how far they got into the development of that, whether those were actually engineering samples that were ever produced, but they were considered at one point. It has the um, same amount of cache, 512, as the um, 56 variant. However, the main difference here is that we're looking at 256-bit um, memory. So what does that mean? Well, it probably means that the um, 40, as well as the 56, will be capped out at 12 gigabytes of memory. Now... I actually don't mind that too much because I think 12 gigabytes is probably going to be okay for a card which is essentially targeting this level of performance. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. Um, I'm very hopeful that I am wrong and Intel do release the 56 variant because I just think it would be really cool in the market. But with that said, guys, I'm also okay with them releasing a product which is decently priced with decent drivers and appeals to the mass market. And also, if Intel can get into the discrete game and play the long term, which is ultimately the, the focus of the company, um, basically everything, I don't wanna say everything is reliant on Celestial because that's not quite true, but the company are basically, like Celestial is like the focus point essentially. Um, and I'm hearing some really positive things about Celestial. The thing is, however, it's whether it can actually be executed upon, because even RDNA 4, like, do you guys remember that it was originally going to be an MCM GPU? And we all know that that's basically no longer gonna happen. This could be N48 and 44. And in terms of profitability, into, um, AMD, excuse me, will do pretty well, because the die sizes are just absolutely titchy. You know, they're tiny, they're, you know, monolithic dies that essentially are the size of like a walnut. Um, but, of course, that isn't going to be as high performance as a highly performance as the, you know, the N41 or even the 40 dies. Um, but they just couldn't get things kind of ready in time. And as far as I understand, there were some issues. Uh, and basically the whole thing... It basically needed to be retaped. Um, and so because of that, they kind of ended up in this situation where that was going to increase the cost, especially because, again, it was a chiplet-based solution and it would have delayed things more. And then at that point, they just said, okay, well, let's just wait for RDNA 5. There were some other reasons as well, but the, the retape, it was kind of like, you know, like the straw and the camel's back? Well, this is basically like putting a washing machine on the poor thing. Not, not a single straw, but literally just putting a washing machine on the, on the poor camel as well. So, yeah, it was like, yeah, okay, screw it. <laughs> We're done. Um, so, anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you found it interesting. I am going to be hopeful with Intel because at the end of the day, um, I want as much competition in the GPU market as possible. This is not to say that I am not excited with, for example, Blackwell. As far as I understand, Blackwell is probably going to launch Q4 this year, so that's 2024, or Q1 next. I've heard conflicting things from different people. However, that seems to be what's going to happen. A number of folks are still telling me pretty much the same thing that NVIDIA are going to basically release it in two waves. So Blackwell is going to launch, basically, let's just hypothetically say Q4. Um, I'm not saying this is the date, but let's just hypothetically say it's November. Um, and then next year, when RDNA 5 is closer, there's going to be another variant of Blackwell. Um, to parrot what I already said in another video, it could be MCM, but it's probably more likely going to be a larger monolithic die. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens because RDNA 5, honestly, is looking really good. However, <laughs> we said the same thing about RDNA 4. So, yeah, we'll just... I, I, I'm, 
I, I guess I'm going to be cautious but optimistic with that. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.